All right, so we're on to 4.5 now, which talks about linear independence. And this chapter is going to be pretty quick. Nothing too much that we need to do here, except just figure out if sets of vectors are linearly independent. So I'm assuming that you're going to cover in class then what linearly independent means. And so here I'm just going to show you how to show that vectors are linearly independent. So here's the problem. Uh, let's start off with then. So oops, determine if uh, whether uh, the vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1, and 3, 0, 2, 0 are linearly independent. in R4, okay? And so how do we determine if they're linearly independent? Well, we throw these three guys into matrices as column vectors, okay? And so here then we get 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1, and 3, 0, 2, 0. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to row reduce these vectors. And this is because by row reducing, we can essentially extract pivots. And once we have pivots, then we know if the vectors are linearly or in independent or not. And a lot, a lot, a lot of people, so, so what does this actually mean, right? What are we actually doing? You kind of want to think of this here. Uh, you want, you want to think of this matrix here almost as like a system of equations. So what we're actually doing is that we're sort of actually trying to solve a system of equations where I have, so we're sort of trying to solve like C1 times 1, 0, 0, 0 plus C2 times 2, 1, 1, 1 is equal to 3, 0, 2, 0. We want to see if a C1 and a C2 exists. If they do exist, then they're not linearly independent because then 3, 0, 2, 0 is dependent on some combination of 1, 0, 0, 0, and 2, 1, 1, 1, okay? So if the system, if this system here is consistent, then they're not linearly independent. If this system is inconsistent, then they are linearly independent, okay? So we want the system to be inconsistent to show independence, all right? And so how we do this? Well, we essentially just row reduce this guy all right, so what I'm going to do then is we realize that these two rows are the same thing, and then I'm also going to zero this guy out. So what do I get? I get 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, right? Row 3, whoops, row 3 minus row 2. And then this last guy then is just a row of zeros. And here we realize then, okay, I mean, you essentially get 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Right? And if you think of it like a system of equations from above, you'll see that here's a pivot, here's a pivot, but this, there's nothing that corresponds to this one here, right? There's no C1 or C2 that can be multiplied by zero that gets one. So we essentially have an inconsistent system of equations, and therefore we see that this system then, uh, these three vectors are linearly independent. And so what would, what would linearly dependent vectors look like? Okay, so this problem is linearly independent and this is actually on a midterm. It's actually a really easy problem on a midterm. Uh, so what does linear dependence looks like? All right, so above here, we see that they're linearly independent. So let's say I have these uh, following vectors. Let's say I have uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, and let's say one, zero, one, okay? These three vectors are gonna be linearly dependent. Why? Is because if I put them into a matrix and I reduce, you'll see that I get then zero, zero, uh, one, one, two, zero, 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 okay? And what does this mean? Well, you guys are gonna say, hey, look, if I do this thing, 
then wait the the that this doesn't work because if i do this there's no solution to this guy up here right there's no solution to this first row that's why i said up here it's sort of like trying to solve this system uh what you actually want to do then is you want to see the number of pivots there are so this if we rearrange this matrix it looks like this and you'll notice that here's a pivot and here's a pivot right so there are two pivots but there are three corresponding vectors and so what you actually want to say then is that this system is linearly dependent because the number of pivots uh, is less than the number of independent vectors uh, or the, the number of pivots is less than the number of vectors right or in this case it's the number of columns and above you notice that we actually have a pivot in each column right one for each vector and so so what's what's the conclusion the conclusion then is you need when you when you want to solve for linear independence and you put vectors into columns you need to see if the number of pivots matches the number of vectors and you can think of it like trying to solve a system of equations here uh the way that i set up these three vectors you kind it kind of doesn't work out that way and so then you want to see oh is it then that does the number of pivots match the number of vectors and since there are two pivots but three vectors then we end up with this result that the number of pivots is less than the number of vectors and so this is dependent okay and you could you could have eyeballed this right away this vector here this vector here is just two times this first vector and so uh, if a vector is a scalar multiple of another vector, then they're dependent.